Hey guys, welcome to Top App Zach here, and today I've got a very useful app, really, that I've just discovered, and it's called Pocket by Read It Later. And Pocket is this very interesting app that allows you to save content off the internet onto your device so you can view it or watch it later. So you can archive it, you can share it, and just in general, you store it on your device so that you don't have to have a data plan. So if you come across something that you want to watch or something that you want to read later on, well, you just save it to Pocket, keep it in your pocket, and then off you go. So let's see if it actually does work the way it's intended to work. Pocket lets you take pretty much anything you find online and save it in an organized way so it's ready to view when you are. So what's the app really like? Well, Pocket's pretty straightforward. You go online onto YouTube or onto a website, you click the share button, and then you can save it to your Pocket, and it just downloads the entire website. So for websites itself, it does save a plain text version, which looks a lot like this, where it's just text, it's an, it's an article format, and it makes it great to read or even listen to. It's got text-to-speech. Read or listen to later on in the day or when you're free or maybe on a commute. Now, it can actually save entire full web pages as well, which uh, tends to save all the images and can take uh, quite a lot of space onto your device. As you can see, it saves the entire web page, and I currently am not running any Wi-Fi or data on this device. It just saves it right there for me to access later on. And it can save videos and images separately if you want, and it's just something which uh, adds a functionality to the device, which is very common on computers and laptops and stuff like that, but it's not so common on mobile devices where you can just grab and save stuff and copy it to your desktop. You can't do that really on mobile devices. So Pocket really does add that functionality to your device and it brings it a little bit more to a PC experience, which I always like. All right, welcome to another segment of Gamer Station, and today I've got a very interesting development by Double Fine. That's right, another game from the ever popular company Double Fine. It's Hack and Slash, that's how they spell it, and it's a very interesting Zelda esque game where it's a top down 2D action adventure where you get to hack the game world. That's right, you get to change how the game works, and that's just a very, very interesting concept. And we're gonna have a, uh, have a look if this is actually worth our time. Now, it's coming to the PC, Mac, and Linux, and it's going for around 40 ringgit. So let's see if it really is up to snuff. So, what's the game really like? Well, you play Alice, an elf armed with a USB sword. Now, that sounds a bit weird, and well, it kind of is, but this USB sword can be used as a traditional fighting weapon to hack and slash the enemies, but it can also interface with many things in the game world. Certain enemies and certain objects in the game world actually have a USB port, and if you plug the USB sword into the USB port, you then can change how that object or how that character works, which sounds very strange, but also kind of reminds me of Transistor, where you have an electronic sword that interfaces with the world, but this takes it another step forward. So for example, you could find a pillar that controls how a bridge extends, and it just doesn't extend far enough. So you plug in the USB uh, sword into the pillar, and then you can change uh, or increase the number of loops it does so the bridge goes further. You can even plug into certain enemies and set their health to zero and they just instantly die, or even change their allegiance so they become friendly instead of enemies. Uh, as you complete missions and go through the game, you collect these books. And these books are actually the document files on how the game works. If you read the books, you actually understand how the programming mechanics of the entire game works, and you can figure out how the game works and all of that. And not just that, you can hack the books. That's right, you can change uh, the rules in the book, which changes the rules throughout the entire game. So if you know what you're doing, you can actually customize the entire game to work how you want it to work. And you have to be very careful about this because you can actually corrupt your own save games if you do the wrong thing. But they always do give uh, sort of save points where you can reload from a safe backup.
So, will you like the game? Well, it's um, if, if, well, if you like Zelda, if you like 2D action adventures, or if you like puzzles based around programming, then you're probably gonna love this game. And it's a very, very interesting concept. And it's something new, which we don't always see. And I can actually see Hack and Slash working very well in the classroom, where you could introduce the game to teach kids how to code, or even teach adults how to code, because the whole game is about hacking, and it's fun as heck, but it is also very educational in terms of teaching you how games work, how programming works, and how one thing controls another. And if you ever want to get into game development, well, this is a game that you should play. So overall, it's a fun game, it's got charming graphics, a great ca main character, Alice, and uh, just something that we've never seen before, and that's something I always love to see. All right, that's it from me. I'd love to thank our wonderful host here, which is Cha Time at Tropicana City Mall. They've been a wonderful host, and we've loved being here. Hope you've had a good time, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hack and Slash, it's a game about hacking. Reprogram the rules and start laughing. <laughs> it's a grand design. Now break dance while you break point on the line. Alas, we're at the end of another episode of Gadget Nation, but don't worry, we'll be back same time, same place next week. And remember, technology is ever-evolving. I mean, it's constantly growing. You have to keep yourself updated, and that's what we aim to do for you. And until then, my name is Adam Carruthers. See you next time.